Hey trappers, um, I'm starting up a new discussion here today and it's uh, uh, just talking about trapping different topography. I know I didn't uh, put this one out there. I've had a lot of problems getting uh, these uh, started. So anyway, um, so talking about uh, today's topic is uh, how we trap by the lay of the land or how I do anyway and uh, uh, when we're talking trapping by the lay of the land uh, for me um, land makes uh, the whole difference in the world because uh, we just can't always say I'm going to trap an edge because sometimes uh, there's very limited amount of edges so uh, hey there mystical mountains uh, hello and thank you um, but you know so you don't always have an edge to go to such as in crop ground or something like that or you might have a fence line but you don't necessarily have um, uh, you don't you know on the other side of the fence it looks the same as it does on this side of the fence so uh, it's not really an edge per se so um, then I also put in there do I have sign because no one point I want to make with all trappers is, is that's the best case scenario for you in your success in trapping is trapping uh hey there 50 trapper i appreciate it you're joining us but you always want to trap sign or uh yeah set on sign uh vegetation does make a difference vegetation um sometimes we can have too much vegetation such as uh like up in the up in maine where i was at um been up in the north woods there, uh, also up in um, um, Minnesota uh, with a student up there. So uh, Pennsylvania, things like that. So uh, sometimes, uh, but <coughs> generally speaking, you're looking for some type of vegetation. And uh, do coyotes live here? Um, that's a big one because you get into scenarios such as, say, eastern Illinois, western Indiana, some very high quality farm ground. Uh, but the land has been V ripped, plowed, whatever you're dissed up, and uh, there there is no there there's nothing but good good high quality black dirt. So those types of uh, sometimes coyotes may not be worth your time of spending too much time there. You catch the coyote and you move. Um, knowing when to pull the sets, and again that that kind of goes right along with what I was just saying, like. Eastern Illinois, if everything is V-ripped and plowed and dissed, you're already living there. So I understand that's your home. You're going to tra you're, you love to trap, so you want to trap it. But maybe you're better off to pull that set just as soon as you get, um, uh, once you catch your coyote and move on. So let's look at uh, an interesting area that I was at. And this this uh, picture I downloaded from the internet, but it... it uh, it's up by Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and I was up. Whoop, hold on one second. I'll call this person back. Uh, but I was up in um, this part of the country, and um, uh, with a student of mine, and the the strip, the contour strip tillage. Um, you know what really catches my eye? If we notice the trees to the left that kind of border border the edge of the field. And you have that nice, uh, 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 you know, corn, wheat, or maybe it's hay and corn, whatever it may be. But those types of uh, terrain is very valuable to, uh, to trappers that live in that type of country. You have a nice blend of, um, a nice blend of uh, crops and timber. Uh, it's great habitat for both fox, coyote. Uh, I don't know if they have bobcats right now, but I, I know certainly know that Pennsylvania's got Fisher and, and some Martin, so, or at least they're trying to get Martin. So uh, good country right there. Uh, we look at, and this here's where it's my uh, friend Jason Vance, and this is up in Maine, and he's kind of in farm country. And basically, this is not my catch. This is Jason Vance's catch. Uh, Northeast Trapper, if you see him on here, a uh, very talented trapper. But he's taking advantage of where they, you know, they, they mowed a section through there and it's perfect edge. Now, in this case, you do have an edge. You have timber. Uh, you can certainly set some traps along that 
tree line over there as well. Uh, but, you know, this makes trapping pretty easy when we get into that. Here's Jason there. And again, he's along a wood's edge catching a gray fox. Uh, but when you're in, when you're in that type of country, um, you know, uh, we're look, instead of looking for cover, we're looking to kind of get out of cover, right? To try to find an area that's a little bit less, a uh, little fewer trees, but offers easy walking. And more importantly, we always got to think about mice and rats and that type of thing, bunny rabbits. But mice, mice make up a heck of a big diet for uh, canines, and that's a good one there. So Jason, of course, he's got a good set and uh, caught that nice gray. Uh, here he's got another red fox, and, and here he's staying out of the farmer's drive down there. But again, he's, you notice he's in good habitat on the edge of that green field there. So I don't know what crop it is, whether I think that there happened to be a... Uh, uh, I think they use it for uh, grass. So they do. I think it's a sod farm, but don't hold me to that. But he, you know, he's trapping right on the edge, just outside of of uh, the the taller grass and off the road to where you know when the farmer comes by, he's going to be he's going to be in good shape. So um, <clears throat> if you guys <clears throat> have any questions, this is not a very long. Uh, live session at all, but if you have questions or you want to make a comment, I'll, I'll certainly do my best to get to you. Uh, but let's look at crop ground. Now we're starting to look into areas that look an awfully lot like eastern Illinois, western uh, western Indiana, that type of ground, wherever this is. I, it's another picture I downloaded off the internet. And in these kind of, uh, this type of topography, we are looking for an edge, and here we have a nice crop change and um, you know you're not going to set a lot of traps here you're going to set one or two traps on the edge of that crop to change and then you need to drive till you either get to a fence line or you end up getting to a uh, uh, to a, another crop change um, i i run into that an all an awful lot in um, western kansas i might look at the plat book and find the landowner or on X and find a landowner actually has um, uh, four sections there. And I'm all excited and I go to the four sections and I realize all four sections are treated as one field and it's all wheat. So basically I have two edges. And um, if you want to count the, if you want to come around the other side, drive a mile or two down or four miles over, because again it's four sections. So or you're going to drive two miles down the road and uh, you turn right around and, and you can set two more on the other side. It might help speed up your catch a little bit, but we got that. So let's get into a different version. Uh, again, this is this is one of my catches in western Kansas, and this is an ideal uh, location here where uh, when, you, when you have, whoop, let me go up one, when you have nice tall, wheat or tall vegetation on one side and you have easy walking on the other side i find that the coyote would 99 percent of the time walk on the easy side to walk on in this case it happens to be a freshly planted uh or a newly planted wheat field that's overwintering i see the same thing occur when i'm uh in corn stubble and i in the other side of the of the of the, of the crop edge would be soybeans so I'll usually trap on the soybean side in that case because coyotes will walk right down that edge. It's easy walking. They use their nose. When they smell something, they, they, they will then jump in. So let's get down here to that one again. But that's, that's a nice edge here. And that's very common for me when I'm trapping in western Kansas. So just to give you an idea. So we got another... Uh, this is a great example here for you guys in crop country. And if you look in the top right corner of that photograph, you're going to see where it looks like they have a waterway, uh, some trees, uh, you know, some overgrowth trees there that they're just avoiding. Maybe it was an old farmyard at one time and got some concrete in it. That's that's common there that the, the farmer rancher will just let that let it grow up, it, you know, they can't do nothing with it. So 
what they do is they leave that section and it heads back to the timber in the back. There's just a little bit of that timber. So um, folk, uh, Mystical Mountain says focal points uh, better uh, than edges or edges better than the focal points. Well, if you got a focal point where the animal's heading to on the edge, just like this picture, it uh, really, it helps, you know. So we have... We have a place where the bunnies are going to be in the back right corner of the of that picture there. Uh, we have the we have that happening. We have the uh, um, we have a destination for the coyotes to want to go to. Uh, Eric Smith asked me, "Do I use glove and wax traps?" Uh, Eric, I I'll come back to me here. The um, I stopped using wax. Uh, all my traps. So I don't know. It's probably getting about eight years now, maybe seven. Uh, but the reason is I stopped is one year in Iowa. I happen to have um, a, a lot of coyotes digging up. Hey, uh, Otter Cat. I had I had I waxed my traps late. I went. You would think it wouldn't hurt anything. I waxed them, boxed them up the next day, and then two days later I was already at. Um, uh, at the trap line where we were going and for a week I, I fought traps being dug at and the only thing I could think of is that my wax may be tainted uh, with odor for my because of my all of my baits and lures that's also in the building and I thought well due to my situation I don't have an extra building to where I can store wax and and that type of thing so I stopped doing that and of course I stopped using gloves uh, probably 15, 20 years ago. So it's just a personal preference. I, I like that. So let's get on over here. But I like this. Uh, I like this uh, edge an awfully lot because as you see where the herbicide has made a trail. Now, if you have deer running that trail as well, besides the coyotes or fox, maybe we need to set just off the trail. But that's a good example of an outstanding trail within a cor uh, on a crop edge there so if i see those and and the what makes this really sweet is you have easy walking for the canine uh or deer in that ma for that matter but you also have a destination for the canine to go to that's important to me is when i see that clump of trees down there and that real rough ground you know there's mice in there you know there's pack rats, wood rats, whatever, and uh, you also turn right around and uh, uh, you also turn right around and you uh, 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 have mice and rats. So anyway, uh, let's see, otter, cat, wax will absorb smells and you got to be careful. Hello, seldom. I'm glad Mike, Mike, uh, Mike Fails is here. Glad to have you. And uh, let's go to our next crop. Now this is, this was actually kind of common in my kind of uh, country of uh, West Central Illinois where we had hedgerows uh, between the field and uh, hedgerows are, are great for both deer hunting and they're great for canine uh, movement. Uh, I've caught some bobcats uh, along those kind of hedgerows but if I was if I had the field here that's that's featured in the center um, certainly both I would have traps on both of those hedgerows uh, and uh, take advantage of that you know so that's common that's a great that you know it out of that whole area where are you going to put your traps you're going to put them on each of the hedgerows so two traps on this hedgerow over here to the left and two traps here on the hedgerow on the right so let's look at another example here now this i i, I didn't realize this is the picture i had but this is common um Forget about the bones. This happened to be a T-bone set where I caught a coyote, uh, you know, because I, I am in that that coyote was in um, there was a there was a dead cow left there. That being said, I love brushy edges. Uh, brushy uh, for this type of country, there's not enough grass anywhere, and in, in this spot with the tumbleweeds and the uh, you also see some sand spurs growing up in there, but. Um, some sunflowers uh, stuff so that edge is you're going to get my attention every time and that's the spot I'm definitely going to be putting my traps whenever I have that type of an edge that's nice and brushy well I guarantee you're going to find mice holes or pack rat holes and things like that I have one more crop picture here 
But um, this is one of my lines up in the northwest part of, uh, of uh, Kansas. And I don't think personally you can get a better location than this where you have nice, easy walking uh, uh, edge here. You can even see the bare dirt between the, uh, uh, the switchgrass. And uh, you're, you're welcome, Mystical, Mystical Mountains there. Um, but you can see where the, the trail would be in the bare dirt right there. And on top of it, anytime you have tall grass, I'm going to bring it back to me. Anytime I have tall grass CRP or something like that, if I, if I, if I ever chose to be a, uh, a coyote hunter with hounds, I would, dump, I would dump my dogs into the tall grass because I guarantee you the coyotes are sleeping in there. They're living in there. That's a great place for mice, rabbits, uh, rats, that type of thing. But I think that <clears throat> out of all the areas I trap, there's nothing better. And I'm going to pull it back up, but there's nothing better for trapping than that than that photo right there. If I find that, I'm going to catch I'm going to catch several coyotes in my opinion at that type of location. And I have there's there's multiple coyotes I caught on this place. You you can't beat it. Um, a lot of walk-in hunting looks like that, so be careful if it happens to be walk-in hunting. You know, make sure that you're not going to catch somebody's bird dog and stuff. But anyway, this is private property and uh, an ideal place to go. So let's get into uh, a really hard type of trapping to me. It's not hard to trap, but when you're in the mountain type trapping. Um, we have, uh, would you blind set more on edges? Well, that, that was a trail set that I caught that one, uh, Miss Mountain. I, I'll, I'll put it back. If we look beyond the coyote, there was tracks going right down that edge. And what I did is I reached over and I grabbed a clump of, of uh, fescue, uh, not fescue, a clump of uh, wheat. And I slid it over there to match the wind and I put my gland lure. So it was just a trail set that if you guys have watched my videos where I'm making my trail sets or scent post or something like that, just something to smear some gland lure on because they are walking right down that outside furrow. It's a great place to set on those type of things. Um, but going back to this type of ground, you really, this is where we're reading topography. Um, any type of a draw is important to me. Uh, if we even look at that big mountain in the background, and it's probably a road going through there, so it doesn't apply. Uh, I don't know. I pulled this uh, off the off of the uh, web but that being said let's say that 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 saddle there because that is a natural saddle in the mountain well you'd want to be you'd want to be setting in that saddle by reading the topography because it's easier for the animals to move through and you also got to rem remember coyotes have a tendency to want to to they're sneaky they don't want to be seen they're very r rare do they ever run on the top of a hill uh, in the broad daylight type of thing, but during in the bottom of these draws, well, coyotes can run down the bottom of these draws very easily without being detected. So I got a message here from Coyote Academy. Do you think there's a difference between fall, winter rack glands when compared to springtime rack glands in regards to attraction? Obviously, the size is different. So let me come up here. Back to me on this one on to answer that question there, Coyote Academy. Um, if I, there, I don't use a lot of rack glands in my lures because I live here in Kansas. Now, when I made my own lures and I was just a uh, Illinois trapper, a Missouri trapper, where I could catch quite a few um, muskrat glands, I really like the the spring the spring glands. They're full a lot a lot of musk odor in them, right? So, uh, muskrat gland is an outstanding lure uh, uh, a lure ingredient or can be used on its own. It's a very soft odor, but anytime I could get uh, spring glands, I would. But because I live in <clears throat> in Kansas and I don't have access to muskrats, I I would be broke. I couldn't even afford. You guys would walk right by the prices on my on my lures if I used them. But it's an outstanding lure if you have them. It's an outstanding lure. It's nice and soft. And what I like about it is is it adds it adds um, uh, curiosity to the to the set. So you add a little skunk underneath of that 
underneath of that um, muskrat odor, well, it, that skunk kind of pushes that, that muskrat odor. So kind of my thinking when you talk these softer musks that you get into. So let's get back here to the mountain trap. So we want to, we want to go down the draws. Um, you're welcome, Mystical Mountains. Um, you, you're thinking draws. You're thinking edges in this tape. In this case, you're welcome, Coyote Academy. Um, I'm looking for these edges just like anyone else is, but the draws attract my attention. And not only do we have to worry about sheep, but a lot of times in my ground we have to worry about calves. Uh, calves do make a difference. Uh, I prefer never to trap in this size of a calf. Just letting you know, this is probably a springtime yeah, springtime type of a deal, and we're probably not trapping. But if you have an ADC job, them little boogers there, they, they'll get stuck in them. So that, that adds some intrigue to it. Um, going back going back to look at when I'm around sheep or where I'm around cattle, and let's just say there's nothing I can do about it. I have to, you know, if I'm going to trap this property, I need to be in this Generally speaking, in the winter time, especially late winter, uh, I'll see the ranchers uh, feeding cake or hay bales or what have you, and then they and you can see where they're feeding them, and then you can also see where they are um, watering the cows, whether it's a stock a stock pond or a, a feeding area. Well, a lot of times, even on this one pasture I was on, it was about five thousand acres. It was a big pasture, and uh, it's located right not too far from me, to be honest with you. And, um, well, I could avoid the cows for the most part on a really nice sunny day, and it was kind of warm. We're getting up in the 40s and stuff. All of a sudden, the cows and the calves, or these were background, uh, you know, young heifers and things like that. Then they'd come out there, and they'd, be, they'd get and step in some of my sets and stuff like that. But the bigger pastures... You can kind of look where they're feeding them, and you you know you just trap on the other the other thirty five hundred acres or something like that. So when I lived in in uh, um, Illinois and things like that, you don't find pastures like you see in this picture beside me. That's actually my home there. Uh, that was and that was uh, during uh, last year's uh, no two years ago. Um, uh, canine mastery weekend so that's why i don't own that many pickups but anyway we have a lot of tall grass because we only run one cow per eight acres so that's why we don't have the intense pressure on our and which makes great habitat to still hold mice and things like that so let's get back into our mountain trapping a uh, nice customer of mine out in uh oregon uh, out there uh, they sent something like this. I don't know anything about their location, but if you look there and you see those draws coming up uh, through the mountain and stuff. Now, this would be a, a line you're probably running an ATV or UTV if you were really going to want to trap this very well. Uh, but I'm interested in those draws. I'm interested in the coolies and that type of a thing. Uh, think about where there's a little saddle above their head up there well if you were going to climb that mountain you probably cross that mountain near near a saddle rather than trying to go over the top of a steep cliff so let's look at a different one now this coyote here another oregon photograph by an, uh, another individual there he uh, uh you know beautiful country uh but you know you notice where he's at he's in the lower country there but I guarantee you there that you can see there's a gully, kind of a, a ditch uh, or an arroyo there forming beyond it. It's probably a great location. Uh, so you take what the land has to what offers to you, and uh, that. Um, then we get, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you get into like where I was up in Maine, and I, you know, this is, you know, a lot of my. Uh, trap ground looked just like this photograph here and I tell you there was a lot of coyotes that ran the road the only problem I ran into was is there was a lot of people also running the roads as they were deer hunting and grouse hunting and that type of a thing but if you have if you're the only if you're behind a locked gate or something like that I'm telling you these roads were 
littered with coyote scat and uh, um, coyote tracks along the way. Also had some bear and stuff like that. But one of my favorite locations when I'm in uh, mountain type of country, timber type of country, as if obviously I wouldn't want to set while they're working here. But if you get into an area that's been logged out or logged in, uh, logged a little bit, I found that um, uh, these log loading decks were outstanding locations because there'll be a lot of bark and different things like that uh, uh, on the ground. Uh, where, which invites mice and invites uh, rats and that type of thing. So it's a sure bet you could set in some of them, some of that bark piles and uh, get yourself some, uh, uh, pick up a few coyotes or a fox in those type of areas. Coyote Academy, what is your opinion on dead piles? Not man-made. Are you uh, setting tight or traveling ways to a dead pile and compost area? That is a great question. Um, and I think there's two ways to do it. Um, so if I was doing a man-made gut pile or dead pile or something like that, I think you need to begin that dead pile, say September, uh, start dropping some dead, pick a dead deer off the road or, you know, do whatever it's legal, uh, throw some beaver carcasses, whatever, start it as early as you can. And with, with no sets, no traps, no nothing in it, get the coyotes coming in. I mean, there's probably get butcher scraps and donuts or whatever you want, whatever you can get. Start those man-made ones early. If I'm not on a feedlot, but I'm on a ranch that happens to have one dead cow, you know, the one cow. If I can, I'll hook a log chain to it. Um... I'll try to dry, I'll try to pull that dead cow down into a draw if I can. That would be preferred by me because again, coyotes like to run those draws and I and I'm looking for a spot, which makes it even better is if you found a cattle trail running the edge of that draw, because guess what? The coyotes will use that cattle trail. And then instead of I don't like setting right on a dead cow myself. That's a one and done type of a deal. I want to, I want to, I, I would like to trap both ways leading to the dead cow, like up the draw and down the draw. And don't make the cow the enemy, make the travel way the enemy. That's, that's been my experience. Now, if I'm in a, a, uh, area that like a feedlot and they have dead and coyotes are going right into the dead, start at the dead pile and then just keep putting sets in and it would be nothing for me to have 15 sets starting from the dead pile working back to where I think the coyotes are coming from and and of course I'm deciding that not only by topography but also looking at sign because there's usually a lot of coyote sign at the dead you you just trap the living crap out of them and I tell you why that works at a, at a feedlot is those coyotes are used to their being um, they're used to being uh, competition there. So let's say you can catch 60 coyotes off of that, off of the, uh, you know, out of that feedlot. Maybe 100 coyotes off of a feedlot. I've, I've certainly caught 100 off of a feedlot in, in a three-week period of time or even, yeah, two weeks, two and a half. Um, those coyotes are, they are, they know another coyote is coming in uh, because it, they see them, they smell them, they know they're there. And that one little bit of morsel, whether you put a little bit of bait in or maybe you dig into a cow that's been cooking and just grab some Hawaiian Hawaiian beef, you know, and stick it in the hole, the coyote, ain't, it doesn't matter. He could have a full stomach and he's still going to go work for it because he de it, it looks too easy. And them crazy things, they'll turn right around and, and they're going to get it before their buddy gets it. It's just greed is all that is. So there is some different approaches uh, that I go through and stuff like that. And my setting heavy in the area, uh, two to three. So I, if I got a dead cow going and you and you can get that cow to where you have trails and stuff, I mean, set up six traps each direction, uh, you know, I mean, uh, and then go to the cow and grab your knife and 
bust a hole in the gut to get to let the air, you know, to get the gases out and that type of a thing. Um, if it's a one and done dead cow. So, but set up pretty heavy coming both ways. The, the colder the weather is, well, it, they'll be even really be on it, right? So uh, we've seen what, a, what coyotes can do to a dead deer along the si end of the side of the highway in one night. But the problem with the dead deer in, on the side of the highway is, is well, you'd have to, almost, if, if it was legal, you'd almost have to put traps all the way around it because where are they coming from? So try to get the dead, um, try to get the dead located down in a draw if you can to where, or somewhere where if it's in the open, we'll put it on a trail or something like that because coyotes follow trails. So do what you can. Larry, glad to have you. Pay attention on coyote traps. Um, probably three and a half, four pounds, uh, unless I'm around swift fox and that type of a thing, uh, and I want to catch swift fox, um, I'll probably bring a smaller trap in, to be honest with you. But um, in western Kansas, they uh, um, there is a lot of swift fox near old badger holes. They live in them, uh, and they go from badger hole to badger hole, and they'll live in those. They'll live in those, so you catch quite a few swift fox along the the dirt roads and that type of thing. But three and a half, four pounds is generally how I do it. Glad to have you here. Let's go on here to, uh, yeah. So here's another example. This is a very good example of log loading areas. Um, we have, a you know, and for me, um, if this was a private road, you could set right on the road. If obviously there'll be, there'll be semis coming in here to haul the logs, but, um, uh, so you wouldn't want to do it right now, but that area once they have it, for, once they have the the things forested and the trees gone, and this was private road, this is an outstanding. All that all that uh, uh, debris to the left side is one heck of a great spot for weasels. It's a great spot for uh, uh, fox and and uh, bobcats and. Uh, in this case, probably lynx up there, you know, coyotes and all that. So it's outstanding location. So um, that's another great location. Let's see here. Would a creek, Mystical Mountains, would a creek edge uh, be better than a crop edge, crop edges? And then, um, so cr let me find a crop picture. Um Uh, one more. Um, let's go to this one. If I want to catch primarily coyotes, I, I would prefer to be on this crop change or a fence line away from a creek edge if I want to catch coyotes. Uh, if I want to catch raccoon and coyotes uh, and skunks and possum, then I would be closer to the, I would have traps along the creek as well. But when we see habitat that doesn't really facilitate good uh, skunk, good uh, good raccoon, good possum, then I would go ahead and uh, trap more out in the open out here because there I'm going to primarily be dealing with just uh, just uh, coyotes there. So yes, less non-targets there. Um, and Coyote Academy, what was the difference you found in stall out areas compared to Kansas and Maine? Uh, thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoy the content. Um, still, you know, um, those are, that's interesting on stall out locations um, on that. I guess we can interpret it um, different ways. Certainly, here's the downside. Let's go, let's come up here to my, um, find my logging, uh, go on down log loading. One more. The downside to trapping this is this is definitely a hunting area, but it would also, and you know, you could set the sign at places like this. I, I don't know if I want to call it a stall out location, um, but let's go down the road where the road curves to the left and we look to the right and you notice it's kind of a draw right there. And I'm guessing if you went around the road and you can see where there's probably a, another draw coming in. To me, those the end of those draws would be like a stall out point, a, a spot 
uh, a spot where coyotes are going to spend a little more time. They may change directions and that type of a thing. Uh, the downside to hunting this type of, uh, of uh, woods edge like this is coyotes could, in theory, he doesn't have to walk down the road, does he? So I could be sitting on the road, but I probably also want to climb the hill to the left, as an example, and to see if there's any trails running along the high ground over here, that type of a thing. And I want to also check out each of those draws down there. And when I'm in, when I'm in Kansas, I, uh, you know, um, we have these really long coolies up there. We have draws, coolies, that type of thing, eastern Kansas. Uh, the same thing applied up there in, uh, when I was in um, uh, Wyoming. And uh, anytime you get to the end down there, I, I, I think that's what you're referring to. But uh, I definitely always set the head of the erosion. I always want to set, you know, in the bottom of the draw where maybe something else takes, uh, ta uh, something else happens at those kind of locations. So um, I like this. I like this um photo very much from when it comes down into forested type of areas i i got i got i was tickled when i saw the title on this and i pulled this off the web but the the title was deforestation and nothing could be further from the truth in this case about it being deforested you can see that it's an active tree farm a management zone and what I really love about the, you're welcome, Mystical Mountain. Um, what I really enjoy about this type of topography, obviously we have a two track road, but we're gonna wanna set, you know, right where it goes, where it starts to go into the trees. That's an ideal location. But we, we realize that these guys, there's a lot of edges here. We have some mature timber here to the right. We have some maybe eight year old, 10 year old uh, uh, spruce or whatever it is to the left. And we have some new ground here in the center uh, that's just been that's just been logged. And, the, you know, there is a lot happening in this type of a location that's just uh, to me, this would be this is a ideal forest type of trapping. You have a lot of stuff happening, even maybe have some terraces where the skitter tra where the skitter uh, trails meet. You can kind of see to the left. There's a couple skitter trails coming through there. Well, coyotes will go right down the skitter trails too. So let me answer a couple more uh, questions here. Otter County Trap in the mountains. And if it's the easiest way for you to travel, it's the easiest way for animals also. Creeks, roads, draws, and cut over edges. Well, you couldn't, you, you should be doing this uh, talk here, Otter Cat, because that's a perfect way to put it. And uh, what's your definition of a coulee? Uh, I probably misspelled that. No, I, I, I probably can't spell it either. But um, so coolies to me are, are areas in farming country. You'd have a waterway when you're in mountains and, and or long hills and that type of a thing. It's kind of a washout area to some degree. And the most severe washout areas to me becomes uh, an arroya and like in New Mexico. The arroyas. Uh, according to Sonny Briggs, you'll find these ditches that just appear in perfectly flat ground type of a thing. It's, it's got a slight slope, but Sonny was pointing out to me that, um, and if I said this wrong, Sonny, just forgive me, but um, it used to be an old wagon trail or it used to be a, an old road where the farmer or rancher used to use the road and because uh, they don't get a lot of rain. Well, you know, what's going to grow there? But nothing but sagebrush and cactus or something like that and the gamma grass and that type of thing and buffalo grass. And because it's so dry, what happens is then they don't have, they don't have the, a bit, that type of ground, the arroyas don't have, doesn't have the ability to recover itself. And what happens is the rain washes it out. It starts out as a it starts out as a road, a dirt road becomes a, a washout ditch, and then the next thing you know, it you got a full. Once it started eroding, then you have it. So, um, am I use, Don Vincent? Glad to have you, Don. Are you usually using a four coil traps? Look like you use a lot of dogless 
Uh, what's your favorite coyote trap? So, well, thank you, Don, for uh, showing up here. Um, I have all everything I got on the four on the number three size trap is four coiled, um, and I and the trap I've been using and buying. Uh, I really like the no BS trap. Um, it's the one trap that right now it hasn't been cheapened yet. Right, it's a heavy duty, high quality trap. I love the fact it's, you know, night lash. I love the big pan on it. Uh, I love the, you know, I used to use steel screen um, uh, wire because I, I believed in what O'Gorman talked about when I was using the Bridger number threes traps. And I still own a lot of O'Gorman modified Bridger number threes. But it was, you know, the Bridger, the Bridger um, pan was so small that uh, I just, um, you needed something to, you know, to help increase that catch area. Well, now that you have like uh, the Bridger number three dogless and you have Kendall Obermeyer's uh, dogless trap, these are big pans. So I've just made it easy on myself, got lazy on myself and saved money. And I've used landscape fabric. And in the last few years, I started using um, uh, sandwich bags, you know, uh, uh, I'm catching coyotes. I, I don't really see misses. <laughs> I mean, once in a blue moon, I'll see a miss. I don't have an actual percentage number for you, but that's it. So um, uh, we just refer them as a different slang term. That's yeah. So let's get back here. Log, log road we get here. Um, let's go on. One more picture here. Yeah, this is ideal from a timber perspective. Uh, skitter trails management good management of a forest or resource you have edges uh, and if you went down in there and you found a brook uh, running along the draw there it wouldn't hurt to put in a canine set there now this picture uh, again i took it from the web but this was a popular uh, when i'm in this type of country this is popular for me especially for bobcat sets um, where you can hang the flagging because you get whatever this what for whatever reason it doesn't have many trees it's uh, it's uh, obviously a place where a coyote or fox or cat would would walk up the hill it would walk up that edge uh, going up over the mountain there uh, it's easier walking so uh, you can hang I could have a set halfway up the mountain off of a a tree that's sticking out probably the tree to the left and i could put an, an attractor off of that tree there and anything at the bottom of the hill and anything at the top of the hill could see that type of of uh of set and i was in a location uh, like that in uh, maine or i'm sorry wyoming and um it was very productive for both uh coyotes and cats and not only did i have my cat set say near that that spruce tree that's uh, sticking out in the middle there, but also put two or three sets in the area because maybe a coyote doesn't want to come to my fancy old cat set, but I can catch coyotes in that type of terrain. And on top of it, it's perfect habitat to hook uh, to use a drag. So the, the, the drag is going to get hung up in something in that type of country. So he'd have to be pretty lucky to make it all the way down the hill without getting uh, busted. So definitely if you have any kind of a washout area like that uh, that uh or limited vegetation or avalanche or something like that obviously avalanche is probably a bad choice of being there when it snows but that type of a thing those are ideal cat locations and stuff so yeah that spot's a killer says otter cat so there's a guy with some experience there so Believe it or not, yours truly, I'm going to come back here to me, but yours truly could not trap a pasture to save my life uh, in, the, in my 20s and 30s. I understood that coyotes ran the crop ground edges. You could go to a fence line and catch coyotes, but when it came down here to pastures, I just couldn't put it all together. And um, so the big thing about this, uh, this location, and it doesn't matter, where this is at in a pasture is you you find the trails as there is here now this is a pretty weak trail but you find the trail and you then more importantly then you find the sign 
and I, I have experience on this trail, so this year didn't make any difference to me, but whether I found any dry dirt or not, but uh, to look for a track. But ideally, you'd want to find you'd want to find that track in a trail and do this. And you're looking for now. This is closer to your Arroya. Uh, it's a cattle crossing. I've shown this picture before, but this is obviously a saddle uh, going over the top of this hill. It's an ideal location. You, you, you are really trapping topographical features um, when you are in big, big pastures or big ground or big country, that type of a thing. This is obvious here. Now behind me is a windmill. Um, so I know the coyotes are coming to the windmill to get some water. The area was very dry. But how are they going to get to the windmill? So I have some sets on this side of the, of the hill, and I also have multiple sets on the other side of the hill. Uh, the tracks justified that. Um, if, you're, um, if you don't have an ATV, UTV, um, I, uh, these, these kind of locations are also ideal. I actually have uh, some traps in the trail, but I found a, a badger hole dug in just off the trail and there was coyote tracks and that type of stuff but if you're going to stay in your uh in your pickup truck which you can cover a lot more ground what you want to do is is in pastures you're going to set up all of these intersecting trails you can set along the edge of the road for the coyotes that are walking down the road but you can also set uh on off of all these trails or in the trails uh when we're going through it and Here's another case of where this is, believe it or not, this is a draw as well. So we got coyotes that's going down the two track road, but I also got a nice uh, uh, cattle trail uh, going in the bottom of this draw. And I, I wish I had another picture of the backside of this, but it's a it's kind of like a dry riverbed, if you could call it that. And uh, so it's a it's a one way. It's a, it's a sure thing, and a trail set would be the perfect way to trap this type of ground. It's no different than whether I'm in, a, in the mountains there or, in, or if I'm in a cornfield and this happened to be a creek bottom or something like that. Um, I know you guys see me do a lot, of, uh, a lot of cattle trails and things like that. Well, I do, but I find tracks. But when the topography, the lay of the land, gives you this natural little natural little uh, I-70 or I-80 type of an atmosphere, they're going to go right down the, the draw. And then you just find the trails that's coinciding or running through that draw, and they're, they're, they're absolute dynamite. I don't have a lot more stuff to talk about. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And like always, I hope you subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. But uh, thank you all very much for coming. And if you have any questions that are something that we didn't cover here, uh, please free, feel free to get back to me, and uh, maybe we'll have a topic about that someday. But thanks a lot, trappers, and 